so this is an interesting article here i think maybe end on this one which is quite cool um Virgil did an interview with Esquire and he sort of kind of clarified his statements about streetwear and impending death. I'm sure you might have seen those comments kind of said off off the cuff, you know, when he did his interview with Dazed that people kind of got a bit crazy over. But, you know, this is part of his MO, social media king, reaction king in that regard. But he kind of clarified a little bit with Esquire, which is a weird place to go to to kind of clarify his statements on streetwear. But hey, what could you do? This title says here, 50 50, Virgil clarifies his statement about streetwear's impending death, right? So this is an article. Um, that will link again in the show notes for you guys to check out by a guy called Gerard, Gerald Flores. So here says the following here. It says, if you ask Virgil Abloh, 2020 um, is the year of streetwear officially dies, right? Given that Abloh is currently at the top of the streetwear Mount Olympia. Uh, Olympia, sorry, echoes of his prediction reverberate through the internet, raising some degree of alarm among streetwear disciples. Is he just uh, being an alarmist or does he see something we don't? He clarified exactly what he meant by his comment this past December, which he still stands by. So this is the following. It's 50 I said it as a means to provoke the industry that we all love, which is, you know, is what it is. Um, the Ablohenian way of looking at the shirts and sneakers and the apparel that he and his other designers like him make is to treat them like an art movement. Except instead of the Baroque period in the 1600s, streetwear's um, Renaissance man has can be traced back to New York's Lower East Side in the early aughts, when shops like Nom de Guerre, A Life, and Prohibit were at the height of the influence here. Definitely because references there. Now they're defunct or shut out their former selves. It just reminds me that most people skipped there over the history lesson that got us here enough today. He says if we want to do the future streetwear to not just if we want the Jewish, the future streetwear to not just become this mainstream thing that can be easily replicated, then us that care about it or are of streetwear need to make it as great as possible, not formulaic. Which is weird. I don't know why he's saying this. this is hmm. So he's challenging everybody to make better stuff by saying it's gonna die. But he didn't actually say it's going to die if we just continue making better stuff. He said it's already dead, it's gonna be a new thing. And I guess this was this was part of his kind of there's been a concerted effort, it feels like, from what I've seen from the outside looking, especially from the fashion types, to kind of poo poo streetwear's influence, put it to one side, and then kind of lift up this return of tailoring, right? Um, as somehow because you know they're saying oh people people in streetwear can't tailor, right? They can't cut a suit jacket, they can't cut a skirt all this sort of nonsense okay cool whatever but dismissing one thing while raising up the other doesn't um doesn't doesn't kind of uh relate to what's happening on the runway right you look at the runway people are still designing sneakers there's still loads of baseball caps there's still t-shirts there's still denim there's still hoodie parkers there's still you know all these things still exist on the runway and they will continue to exist because we've finally got a position where you know fashion has always been a bit fuddy duddy right i've always kind of believe that even when I'm, though I'm a fan of it it's always been a bit up his own ass but I think the advent of street style especially for the most part and then the bloggers and then the influencers and then streetwear and then kind of the, the kind of overall underlying um, infatuation that fashion people have with skateboarding has allowed or birthed this kind of renaissance in streetwear right it's allowed them to kind of really be adjacent to the community because it felt like at, there was a period in time where when Paris Fashion Week men's was going on or Paris in general people all that agenda in LA right or in bread and butter in Berlin they want in Paris fashion week shows but now you can see the this the you know this whole synergy between both industries because usually when the men's shows are showing in Paris everyone goes and does their showroom in Paris too right all the streetwear brands because usually they're you know um, usually aimed at male demographic you know between the ages of like say 14 and 58 and they all go and flood over there because that's where most of the buyers for all the big retail st- for the big kind of merch retail stores for men stuff like Essence, Tresbian, um, and uh, Mr. Porter. All those guys are there anyway, seeing the show so they can pass through your show at the same time. So you know it's to kill two birds with one stone. And obviously you can you know smooth winding down some of the fashion types who are a little bit more loose with the older company card. So they love to, so in public they're saying that streetwear is done, but the reality is the runways are still flooded with kind of streetwear influence items. And like I said, I think fashion bar- primarily is mostly, is mostly kind of geared, yeah, I say fashion, it, with a capital F, is mostly geared towards women. Style is mostly geared towards guys. And guys, for the most part, lend themselves towards streetwear. But then now it's flipped where a lot of women are now kind of 
embracing the idea of kind of a relaxed way of looking, right? They're not trying to look like Anna de la Russa. They don't want to wear head to toe Combinosa runway looks to their office job somewhere, right? Um, it's not practical, but they do want to be comfortable and they do want to be chic. So they're adopting some of those methodologies too. So to say that it's dead or it's going to die is, uh, you know, a defunct statement. To say that you're challenging people is a defunct statement too, because how many, you know, merch is a good example. Band or music merch is essentially quote unquote you know it's like it's like a one oh it's like streetwear 101 merch isn't it long sleeves hoodies t-shirts and hats like you can't get more quintessentially streetwear than merch stuff and that covers the gamut between heavy metal to hip-hop it just covers every single kind of genre so it will never die if those things are still around um and again, I don't think people need to be challenged because they're already making, because already, if you look at it, most for the most part, most brands want to get their stuff on like Dover Street, right? So by proxy, you'll want, you're going to want to have your stuff look comparable to or better than the stuff that's already on there. So there's a different mindset that people like, you know, back in the day when people had, were getting their stuff stocked on, I don't know, Karma Loop, right the aesthetic and the taste level was of a karma loop level right you're competing with karma loop brands but now you're competing with trans bm brands and trans B's own label you're competing with essence's own label the essentials all these things are kind of eating at your kind of market share so if you're a brand now you can't just come out come out of the game with two kind of prints of a basic hoodie you're gonna have to do something else to kind of separate yourselves but you're still coming from the ethos of the street with me. So I don't know, that, that quote was a bit weird. Anyway, continue to say, said, some may find a foreboding proclamation like this coming from him confusing, polarizing, or maybe even offensive, but I believe it isn't completely wrong. Everything from fad to human condition comes to an end eventually. Obviously you've got this gay picture of them two wearing the same jacket, which is, you know, I don't really understand, but of course he looks better than Drake because Drake can't really dress that well. Continue to say, says, um, what trend on earth exists that doesn't die? He said, it's a real intellectual question. Not really. No, it's not intellectual. It's just a question that people can answer. And, you know, all trends end like civilizations end, isn't it? Uh, it says, if we love this culture of ours, you need to think about it. It's like disco. People thought that it was going to last forever. Do you see disco around today? No. Yes, you do, though. That's the thing. This, this guy is a little bit, is a little bit TikTok, isn't it, when it comes to these kind of things. That's definitely, it's definitely like his worldview he thinks is echoed in the grand scheme of things like hasn't he heard of future boogie does he not know god jansen's one of the biggest djs in the world and he plays loads of dicks go crystal clear to like there's loads of good even just a soul train uh party they put on um in peckham that happens i think once a month is maybe one of their most well attended parties that they put on right horse meat disco are still touring the world it just inputs like you know didn't the weekend put out an album that's inspired by that kind of 80s synth pop i tell a disco sort of feel um daft punk are essentially what they're kind of kids of that whole glam rock um abba uh kind of scene so to say that it's dead or that that's not around today is dumb like everyone's playing it you know you don't even have to go to i'm sure some of those swanky Parisian after parties, maybe for Elizabeth, Isabel Moran or something. I don't think they're gonna get a DJ in playing hip hop and hit and heavy metal. They're gonna be playing, or maybe heavy metal, or maybe playing folk and disco stuff because you know they're all twirly French girls. I like to spin around in circles and do that white girl dance. So to say it's dead is completely wrong. Right? It just goes to show his scope of understanding of the dance music scene scene is quite limited. Maybe he means in terms of the customers that buy streetwear, like you know, if they're quintessential hip hop kids. Will they be listening to? Are they going to be listening to the new Tiger and Woods EP? Probably not. But people, other people are. I know I do, and I wear hoodies. So this is one of the biggest grievances. It says the state of the culture is the tornado spin cycle. The releases that's meant to entice pipe bees to lust after shoes on a weekly basis. Even though he's been behind some of the most lusty, uh, worthy sneakers of the last few years, Ablo also points out another um, carcinogen. What Car carcinogen? carcinogen to streetwear can be found in a comment section <laughs> this is funny so when the first when first looks of his jordan 5 collab hit the internet it was lambasted by the trolls with the itchy twitch for twitter fingers um Abla saw every negative comment about his shoe and made a point to remind him to remind his detractors on his release date which is you know which is a good little flex i think um i think he posted on here let's see if we can get that up there i think he reminded everyone about people requesting it but again i don't think that's a bad thing i think prior to these shoes coming out i think it was common not, not common knowledge but it was a widely accepted truth amongst people that buy jordans that the fives weren't that great right um this is here lol i remember all those that said the fives were whack right but now they obviously are, are texting him and wanting to have his shoe caught cool. 
Don't get me wrong, that's a nice little humble flex, but I don't think you can get cocky on the station because widely most fans. I remember even the time when Fairfax London was wearing a lot of fives. Um, he was really the only one wearing them, right? A few other sneakerheads, but they're not the most easy shoe to wear, especially for kids nowadays who wear. Maybe now because people are wearing like flared out trousers, but back in the day or maybe a few months ago when it was a bit more of a slimmer silhouette those shoes are way too chunky the tongue is really strange they're hard to lace in a good way um it's just not like even the way he's laced them up here they're not the most easy shoe to just to kind of rock so the people don't like them mainly because of that and if you have the one you have the twos you have the threes and the fours um it's very difficult to justify getting a five right in terms of looks wise especially when you skip over the fives and you go to a six that look you know considerably better in terms of paneling and shape they just look a bit bizarre they look sort of like a low top that's got a mid foot added on top of it how it kind of the laces go all the way to the back there's not that kind of triangle shape to them so i don't think that was a bad suggestion. that was a bad call by people i guess when they once they saw them in person and worn a little bit they kind of got a bit of hype and again i just think in general like if you put out a sandal with fucking sandal written in quotation marks they'd sell out too it's not necessarily an indication of the is the shoes good it's just a reflection on the level of hype he's able to kind of generate his product which is great for him but again i don't think it's a point to raise in that context but maybe it's just me but i, I think in general I don't leave leave a comment below and let me know but I, I don't think people actually give a shit about jordan vibes until these came out anyway and mostly they gave shit about them because they would resell them and because they're limited edition and you can flex on people and it continues here says there was a presiding opinion that they were whack now everyone's mad that they can't get them i obviously don't care mm. yes you do because you're mentioning it and you tweeted about it he said that in ablo's estimation sneakers are more like sculptures that you find in a museum or okay, cases getting wanky less trademarks of hype sneakers are actually part of his first solo show museum exhibition figures of speech at chicago's mta that he likens himself to the oh okay it's gonna get a bit wanky it says here um here's a quote from me it says this is for me and my own narration design it says the same way that uh van der van, van der Rohe, um was making his own catalog of ideas for his own imagination for me it's a much the same thing obviously i think from the perspective of the kids from the comments too because i'm i'm that kid that wasn't given an opportunity to design i don't think the kids commenting on the comments i don't think the kids that that I say anything in the comments or chat shit but I'm unnecessarily kids that don't get opportunity to design I think anyone can nowadays right you just need a you know you need one of these a couple of ideas maybe half a day with you know with a sketch pad and you can make something yourself I think they're just calling shit out because they realize the circle jerk that exists in every industry every industry has a bit of a circle jerk around people that are kind of propping it up and kind of bringing the most amount of eyes and money to that scene because you know everyone's kind of eating off it right if he's successful everyone around him gets success as well they get paid they get looks so it's only common sense that they're gonna wank him off and make it seem everything he touches a genius because it propagates or pepperish pe perpetuates this idea that he's one so that someone someone you know with a bit of sense that wants to hire a team of people would then look at the person left to the right of him and get them involved too so those kids are calling stuff in the comments some of them may be trolls it's so true some of them could be failed or destroyed designers but for the most part it's just kids that are calling that stuff that they see in it the clothes don't really hit that well the shoes are his best thing that he does um the fives weren't that good of a shoe in general then he puts his name to it he's able to do a good flip on them they get seen in person in real life it always changes stuff i think even back in the day i knew it from the time of the crooked times where you see like an image of a leaked picture of a shoe from a line sheet but you see it in real life it completely changes how you actually view it so that's nothing to really write home about so i don't know it's a strange thing to say but anyway um, he says here now that i have it he says i express it by putting my idea on the table not by commenting on others ideas like this which is a fair enough statement i think if you're in this position you are a prolific worker you do put out a lot of stuff right he is smashing out the collaboration smashing out the content you know fingers and different sort of pies it can be a bit disheartening to see people who haven't done jack shit tearing your thing apart after giving it one second look or brief but i guess that's just part and parcel of the world we live in it is what it is you you know on one side of things you have people kind of you know saying you're the malcolm x or whatever and on the other side of things you have people saying you know you're only there because your kind is mate those things are both not true but they are what they are in it there's nothing really you can do about that one nicotine says ultimately ablo is looking is looking beyond creating the next big ticket item for resale market and looking for the next generation of designers who will eventually who will ultimately be responsible for the life and death of streetway says i want to inspire kids to create so take the criticism of my product and make the 
and take the criticism of any other designer and make something just don't sit and critique which i definitely agree i think that's a very poignant bit to kind of end on right the idea that you shouldn't just be looking at what he does and because actually the white ones are really good actually um and just pointing fingers and saying oh this shit is bad which it might be but i guess again it, it depends i don't know most people that are actually making stuff probably don't have time to sit down and comment probably let's say that but if they are they're not commenting because they can't make stuff they're commenting because they're just you know you have eyes and you see stuff you have fingers you can type why not leave a comment it's not i don't necessarily see the bad thing about that back i guess people are a bit annoyed with comments because they're public because they're news they're usually news items when we were commenting on forums no one seemed to care people used to jump in forums all the time even back in the day when they had display forums for so the, the designers they used to, or I think they still designed the Supreme website, had their own little private um, forum thing that you got invited to. And people used to say the wild shit on there, and there'd be people that own brands on there, Hypey's forums are the same, probably hundreds used to go on there all the time and kind of, you know, plead his case with people that are ripping his brand to pieces. But that was okay. But now suddenly, if you comment on a news piece on Hypey's, oh, on Hypey's not by it, you're some disgruntled kid. But I don't think that's a really fair uh, characterization. But again, I do appreciate the idea that you know if you are out there and you're a kid and you think his stuff isn't that great you know th th there's never been a better time to do your own thing you know you have no real excuse you save up a bit of money from your part-time job you flip a couple of trainers and suddenly you too can have your own you know um psych ward or you know um sicko brand whatever it may be out there pumping stuff out and doing little limited drops it's not really that difficult to do anymore and there are no real excuses anymore as well in that regard because the barrier of entry is so low which is great for everyone to get involved in but yeah that is from esquire i'll link it again showing if you guys to check out a full article on him kind of defending himself regarding some of the criticisms he might have got for that comment